Except that they are just strong what they do. We're going to be starting here on Apocalypse. Let's see how it breaks down. All right, here we go. Starting off again. Apoc, we've seen a lot of Apoc today. Usually the same exact storyline. Usually with Demon, it's a little bit more grounded play. We see that so many different times. But again, that's usually the essence of the play. That being said, though, Apoc, a lot more offstage potential. We're immediately seeing that. To be the Leo, though, on the back foot, as there's a strong, aggressive presence from Kyler using that orb, sending everybody into the air. But the Leo now starting to find that response factor. Mm-hmm. LGC trying to get back on stage. There we go. They got the orb in play. Good little bit of damage there. Ooh, went for a big sig right there, but not going to be able to find the hit that they were looking for. But still, a great start for uh, Kyler as we continue to push forward here. But, I mean, Thaleo, really not that far behind. Oh, that Whoa. was almost super sick, but still finding a way to take out the stock. Beautiful play. Not too bad, not too bad. Now, keep in mind, again, Ember very, very low on that defensive spectrum in terms of stats. That being said, you got to watch out for the chip damage. Very easy to go up when you have a sword and orb going up against you, especially because pretty much with those two weapons, almost all of your punish options are covered. So the Leo's got to be careful. A fast character like Ember needs to be tempered with and slow down a little bit more. But that being said, though, a lot of punish potential coming through, especially off stage. but Kyler Alice holding it down, still trying to maintain that first stop, but unfortunately does now start losing it about a minute in. I mean, that's exactly what I want to see too. Like when we start turning everything around here, right? The Leo, even though they lost the first stock, to be able to answer back as well as they did, that's what I'm looking for in a player. And as you can see, things are actually relatively even here. I think the Leo, okay, definitely is a little bit behind now. I know the shades of orange look very close, but let me tell you, there is a little bit of a difference. And even more so now as Kyler continues to kind of dominate the center stage here. And that's actually going to be a big part of their game plan in general. Like, yes, we are going to see the edge guard here, right? But I don't think they're as obsessed with going off stage. Maybe a couple strong plays just kind of keep them mixed up, but I think the center stage is going to be the big play for them. We have to keep in mind, too, Kyler Alice was able to find that first stock off of a huge ledge guard play, right. so it's not something you want to do over and over again. The Leo could read into that and maybe try to find a punish now, knowing what Kyler Alice's favorite options are. That being said, though, the Leo able to... Okay. Almost cast her curse it there. Able to almost maintain a little bit of that semblance of the second stock, but now weaponless going into their final stock of game number one. Kyler Alice does have that really nice lead. Guitars are out. Immediately Immediate oh. deep dive almost below the stage. This is a fire and fury coming out from Leo. And you know what? That might be a reason why Kyler stays on stage even more so. Yeah, you got him once, but it didn't seem like you're going to be able to get him twice. So as we get into the last stock here in game one, we're going to see if Kyler can find a way to rein it in because you kind of gave the Leo a nice little, you know, boost in their, their confidence here, a little bit of momentum as we get into the final stocks. And look at that, they do have a slight lead. Now, granted, it isn't anything super crazy or super impressive, but we do see the weapon toss going right back to the orb, and Kyler's been making some noise here, but the Leo also something fierce. Oh, and look at this complete control over Leo right now. Up until now, we had just seen every option again, one completely covered. Kyler Alice, though, not in a great spot off stage. Nearly found some semblance there on the downside, but no, not quite just yet. The Leo, everyone back on the stage once more, trying to find where the predictive movements are going to be. Where's that landing factor from Kyler? But no, a strong side sig. Oh. It early taunt to come out. The representative of Italy, but is that going to be enough? No, a little premature. Kyler makes their way back onto the stage. Weapon throw in hand, or lack thereof now, but oh no. That ground battle almost would have taken down that yeah. final stock. I uh, do that. That taunt might come back to haunt them, man. Taunt to get bodied literally on the table here. And oh my god, almost taking it. Oh, and, oh okay, wow. thank goodness. Wow, Thaleo was able to get that one and actually just find a way to close it out because, man, you don't want to be on the on the opposite side of when you talk because you're feeling good about yourself and then your opponent's like, all right, well, I'm going to swing this game around and I'm going to win. That's a feels bad moment. It's kind of like almost, you know, a few frames off from being like, can, can I take that taunt back? I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> I was bashing. I was bashing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was an accident. This input. 428 damage coming out from the Leo on that bow. Unbelievable. Three, and honestly two, speaking, we haven't one, seen enough bow on APOC so far today. Mm -hmm. I think this is the perfect map for the bow. Right amount of distance to have complete control. And right away, Leo's proving exactly why that's the case. Yeah, man. And we have our one commentator blessing uh, for today. So you've already we only get one. Like, we only get one as a combined unit. <laughs> Otherwise, we got unlimited curses. Unlimited, as many curses as we desire here. As Kyler uh, trying to curse Leo all the way to the top last up.
Cloud not quite able to take them all the way up there and close it out, but still, nice little bit of damage there. They are certainly looking for that SIG uh, a couple times with the slide off as well. Yeah, I really like the spacing between the two players right now. Just being able to kind of space each other apart just a teeny tiny bit, but that also means this is a game of punishes. Each player able to go for these long, long strings of punishes and attempting to find some sort of, you know, combo to, you know, rack up that damage especially, but this ending of the Socks have been incredibly difficult for both players, and we do see Kyler taking down Leo, yes, but look how even things are still. It only take one more of those extra strings from Leo to even things up again, and we just see it now, but once we see that trade-off to the next big string, it's gonna go yellow, yellow, orange, orange, red, red, and eventually someone's gonna lose oh! that star. Oh, no! Never mind! Okay, Kyler Alice swapping up the script! That was actually insane. A beautiful spike there. And you can see, actually, the Leo uh, having the presence, too. Like, when Kyler went all the way down there, tried to get caught up in the recovery so they could find their way back to stage. Unfortunately, Kyler is just, uh, you know, being a little bit more elusive than that. But still, what an incredible comeback here. Considering the Leo started off so strong, and now Kyler going for two in a row and continuing to build up this damage like it ain't no thing. This is a lot of trouble here for the Leo. Oh. And that's going to be it, I think it will be. And what a game. Game two, wow! Wow, unbelievable. I mean, just the use of the sword over the orb going into the end of that second game, just unbelievable. I think that's pretty much the adjustment that all you need to make. We had seen a lot of orb in the beginning, and orb is great for that early chip damage, able to rack up that, you know, white to yellow to orange really, really quickly. Mm. But finding those stock options, not necessarily in the favor of someone like Kyler Alice in that engagement. So I think swapping to the sword, a really good alternative. And considering so far we've really only seen Bo coming up from the Leo, it wasn't really that hard to go for a big picture adjustment. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was definitely a huge turnaround, though. They definitely really needed that to kind of spark their gameplay going into this game three. And you know what? Hey, we complained about not having enough game threes earlier. Look at us. Yeah. This is game, game threes of plenty. We have two game threes in a row, you and yeah, I. Yeah, we have a good streak going on. I like that. Hopefully it <laughs> continues. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll definitely see. But, hey, we're going to be getting into game three here for sure. It looks like we're taking our time. Trying to figure out what stages we're going to be going on. And obviously, you know, things get a little bit more dicey here at this point in the bracket. Oh. You know, being on the winner side of thing, nobody wants to go to the elimination side of bracket here. So, like, obviously, they're both going to take their time. But as we can see right now, we'll see how this plays out. Miami Dome, so socks should be flying. Yeah, Miami, it's a little bit smaller than APOC, but what I'm focused on are the blast zones. We've seen Kyler go for this extended offstage play, and it's definitely putting Leo in a little bit of an uncomfortable factor there, but the smaller blast zones, that might mean Kyler Alice can shut down this game a lot faster. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. A lot of movement there from Taleo. Definitely trying to be a bit more careful. They realized exactly what situation they were put into in that game, too, and how once Kyler kind of got their, their motor going, Thaleo was just in the mix, like nonstop. It basically until Kyler decided to let up a little bit. So you can definitely see they're, they're trying to, you know, weave in and out, trying to pick their uh, oh. parts a little bit better. And actually looked really clean right there. So beautiful stuff from Thaleo, especially in this game three to get it started. All it takes is a skin swap. Moving away from the traditional ember, back around. Getting to another one, beautiful work. And again, this bow work is just unbelievable. I love what we're seeing here. The spacing, the counter spacing, looking to not get punished either. But Kyler Alice used most of that first stock on orb. This sword plane now really making its presence in the second stock. Has been a little bit slower, looking to punish all these rampant signatures coming out from Leo. But again, that racked up damage, the recovery is just not enough. And already Kyler looking to kind of eye on themselves, maybe to that final stock. Mm -hmm. Well, there we go. Answering back. You've still taken quite a bit of damage, so this is definitely not looking too hot right here. But I like that. Picking up the weapon right as it was spawning, too, because the Leo was definitely looking for it. So Kyler made sure to try and weapon serve him as best as possible. But here come the Katars back into the hand, and we've seen what the Leo can do with these when he gets the right opening he needs. And there we go. Nice little opening. Ah, unfortunately, went the wrong way with that read. But you know what? Sometimes you get to make those plays just to see if you can get something else out of it. Yeah, and I love how Kyler is playing a lot faster once those Katars are out. That comfortability factor definitely there to punish the Qatars sword though double nares into the air two to two though keep in mind game number three depending on who goes down these last two stocks it will bring somebody to the elimination bracket mm -hmm. one throw is prone that being said grounded gameplay 
attempted ledge guard, possibly from Leo, a little too far away. Really just looking again for that single shot to bring Kyler to the last stock. Sheesh, that was definitely a little bit of a problem Woo! there. But you know what? Kyler has done a good job of evening it up mostly because there goes the stock right there, and it's an even game. Not just mostly, but entirely. Last stock scenario here, game three. This is definitely going to get really dicey for both players. Uh, there we go. Kyler kind of, excuse me, the Leo opening up with a little bit of that hand to fist combo. Just trying to build up a little bit of damage, but just trying to find a weapon now. There we go. We see the bow in hand as things start to get a little more dangerous here for Kyler. Yeah, and this orb has been a struggle for Kyler in the last two games. Not able to maneuver themselves around with that bow. The bow is simply just finding all the wrong, all the right ways to get around Kyler. Kyler makes their way back onto the stage trying to get that sword, but instead, the Leo just going to make sure the weapons starve away. Kyler definitely not able to find as much impact this time around, but again, just kind of playing and keep away and run away, waiting for that bow to come back. Both players on their less optimal weapons. I mean, I'm gonna say Kyler on the orb is less optimal. We've seen him do a lot of great things here. But compared here. to the sword? Oh, uh, yeah, the sword's really good, but I think Kyler's equally good on both of these. I, actually, I think we've had more stocks be closed out with the orb than the sword, maybe. Oh! I mean, it doesn't matter either way, because we're talking about the wrong player as Stileo finds a way to clutch out this game three as they continue to move on in the winner's side of bracket. And man, what a strong game. Let's hear it for controller players. Woo! I mean, you know, from an analytical point of view, it, it, there's not really a lot to take away from this match. It was just a really even game through and through. I would say the first game was dominantly in Kyler Alice's favor, but I think the strong adaptation that we had seen around just the sword play, sword versus orb, I'm going to maintain that the sword was better for Kyler Alice than the orb was because we, we'd seen the bow have that such huge pressure factor in games two and three, and while it was absent in one, the orb took more of a presence in game one. That being said, though, that pressure factor, the orb coming, I'm sorry, the bow coming through in those second and third games really, really put Leo above everybody else. 500 damage, that has to be a record. Uh, yeah, 501, I mean, on the bow, like, that's, that's a lot. That's a, a lot, lot of damage. That's a lot of arrows to be tossing around, shooting around. But hey, you know what? That's what you need to do to kind of uh, get this out here, get that W. I and mean, we talked about how some people are weapon specialists earlier. Talked about how some people have to rock both as best as they can. Obviously, Thaleo, very comfortable in that boat. Likes to, you know, shoot some people out of the sky. And they were definitely on top of their game there. Now, look, my brain's very small. But if I had the one takeaway from that matchup, I think Leo had a big bull.